How do you deal with rejection? Because that's maybe a thing that people are like, well, I don't want to ruin this relationship. I don't want to feel like they don't like me anymore. You know, how do you deal with it? And how can you help somebody um, who might be struggling with that? Like somebody goes into sales. I used to be in sales, KJ, and you know they say you, you got to get rejected, you know, ten times before you even have one opportunity <laughs> to talk about your product, you know. And so you just can't take it personally. It's it's they're not rejecting you; they're rejecting the, the message you're bringing a little bit. And uh, I think you just need a little bit of a thick skin and say this isn't about me. If I see somebody in a burning building and uh, they need rescuing, sometimes I'll put my own well-being in jeopardy to go and, and rescue or help. And, and, and I think the same way in, in sharing the, the good news of the gospel is sometimes people will give you a harsh response or they'll, they'll say, you know, you're mm. one of those Bible thumpers or whatever. And, and, and yeah. you, just, you just don't take that personally. You say, I care and I love that person so much. It's worth the potential of me getting rejected or teased a little bit and mm. you know and I, mm. I, I used to uh, share a lot in my workplace about my faith and, and the people used to tease me and needle me they I'd be going on in the elevator and say hey Carrick we're going to the Kit Kat you know girls club you want to come with us oh, you know wow. and, and I would laugh and I'd say, oh thanks so much for the offer but I'm not interested today but yeah <laughs> thanks for asking you know and, and yeah. so we could just interact back and forth and I can see where they're mm. coming from that mm. you know they're they're just not sure what I'm about but as I can be warm and just relate to them I just don't take it personal like I, you know yeah. they're, they're they're just a little bit not sure of what I'm all about and and mm. and, and what I'm talking about and uh, it's okay and I think as you have a, a warm approach even if you do it poorly, if, if people see that you really care about them. You know, I've had people straight mm. up saying, Carrick, I don't have any interest in anything you're sharing. Don't ever talk to me again about this. <laughs> okay, I appreciate you letting me know. Yeah. <laughs> you, know yeah. you say, thanks, I won't do that, you know, and, and I'm not going to disregard their wishes, but... Do you still talk? Would you still continue? Oh, to kind absolutely, of, yeah. Professionally, we could joke and, and, you know, have lunch together and still, you know, and but... But it's funny when people know what you're about in the office, when things get tough for them, it's amazing who they come to. You know, they say, hey, Carrick, I'm going through this divorce right now and things are really tough. And I was wondering if, and, and they're willing to mm. look for help and, and encouragement yeah. from a, a source yeah. that they say, you know, he, he really, I know, cared for my soul and, and I need to bring that to him. So I think... Some of my biggest failures later on, maybe God turns them around and saying, you know, he, he's, he's genuine and he yeah. has integrity and he really just does care about me. But uh, I, I used to consider my workplace my mission field. You know, I think God strategically planted me among mm. my 600 coworkers and uh, I'm a missionary for God on my uh, workplace at IBM, you know, sharing the good news of the gospel. And uh, I'm just carefully disguised as a salesperson or a systems engineer that yeah. I was, you know? And yeah. so my real mission is to, to interact with people and see people coming into the kingdom of God. And by the way, I get paid for it by doing this systems engineering <laughs> job, you know? So, uh, but I don't, I don't take company time to do it or whatever. I, I mean, I'm careful to do it over lunch or after work or whatever. But, yeah. uh, but that's my mission field. And, and, it, and it's a joy to, to develop these relationships. So I used to... You know, I, every year at Christmas time, I used to do a Christ a Christmas luncheon where I'd make huh. a bunch of sandwiches and chips and and oh, uh, nice. pops and bring it in. Yeah. And I'd ask people straight up. I said, "I'm I'm doing this uh, luncheon that's going to talk about the, the spiritual side of the holidays, the Christ of Christmas. Would you be interested in coming?" Mm. And most people weren't. Any anyway, interested in the spiritual <laughs> things and straight up say no thanks. And so I'd ask fifty people, and twenty would show up. Yeah. But then I would, uh, over lunch, a free lunch, uh, share the good news of the gospel. So it, over time, uh, people just hear the uh, how they can know Christ personally. And mm. I, you get a reputation in your workplace that yeah. you know, this guy is, is really serious about following the Lord and, and huh. he cares about me. Huh. Does it take a step of faith for you to, to put yourself out there? And Jesus meets you, or like, what do you think the, if you understand, where's yeah. the gauge at in that? Because I think, like, yeah, 
I didn't do that day one, by the way, because I was a shy kid, right? Yeah, right, you know? right. But, you right. know, it, being in sales, I'm a little bit learned to be more of an extrovert and stuff like that. But I took baby steps to get there. At first, it would be just inviting somebody out for lunch and having a conversation mm. for lunch. And one funny story, I remember talking to one of my coworkers and, and saying, you know, hey, uh, uh, Joe, if, if you were to go across the street and get hit by a bus today, do you know mm. where you'd wind up in eternity? You know? and, <laughs> and he'd laugh and he'd, he'd say, no, nah, I don't know. You know, And he never did give his heart to the Lord through that lunch or subsequent lunches. But I, I saw him at a reunion like 20 years later and he goes, Carrick, I'm still looking for buses when I cross the street. You know? <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. sometimes it's not even having them really give their life to Christ, but it's just poking a little bit of truth and moving them one inch or one step closer yeah. to Christ. And so in my faith walk, I, I did it in little baby steps, you know, just little telling my coworker over lunch or having that spiritual conversation. And then over time, you just go like, I feel pretty confident about sharing this yeah. gospel. And, and I learned to have a an approach that that communicated I'm for them. I'm not here to you know just beating people over the head. I, I, yeah. I really care about your opinion, and I'm not going to be pushy. I'm not going to shove it down your throat. But I really do care about you, and I want to make sure you're in heaven with me. You know, forever because I care about you. Yeah, you know? I care about you. Yeah, I, I would say for uh, for me, um, I more on the extrovert side. So I'm the guy who's on the plane yeah. and I always look for those kind of, because you, you're great? sitting by random people, you have no idea where they're from, who they are. And I've just been able to, um, and I, like I say, I'm more wired this way. So I have a little bit of an advantage there where yeah. it's just like, I naturally am intrigued by people. So I want to have conversation. I want to get to know you. I want to. I don't think I've I, the the longest I've ever flown has only been four, five, almost five hours. Uh-huh. Each time, I think I've spoken the whole way. So uh-huh. if if you're gonna get on a plane <laughs> with me, now I can read social cues. So, but but for the most part, if you start to put that book down and talk, we're probably gonna talk the whole rest of the way. But. I love plane rides because there's no <laughs> risk. If they hate me, I'm never going to see them again. You know, that's easy. you know the hardest person to share with. It's mom. You know, it's somebody oh, in your own yeah, family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yes. know, like yes. uh, if they think you're a wacko or whatever, you know, she's not going to bake me cookies anymore. You know, <laughs> well, <laughs> the closer you are, the more risk. Well, you know? even could you speak to even that? So, like a, a family member. Yeah, I think that's a, a big struggle for people. Sure. Like especially you're coming from an occult background. Yeah. How do people, if they feel like they're the only one or, you know, could you give some encouragement to that? Just what, you, what can they do, you know? You know, I think a, a great approach with people is to tell your own story, you know, as uh-huh. opposed to you need Jesus or, you know, and, and yeah. get in their face is just telling your own. Here's what I found in my own life. This wasn't working. Or I misunderstood this. And you tell your own testimony, your story, mm-hmm. and you can sort of weave little elements of how you came to know Christ right in the story as you t- you tell your own thing. That's not threatening, you know, mm-hmm. and that's not shoving it down. I'm just I'm just telling you my background and and uh, where I've been. So I think that's always a good approach, a place to go. So I just say, hey, you know, mom, uh, I gotta tell you what's going on in my life. And now, what parent or you know wouldn't want to know more about what's going on in their kid's life yeah, or whatever, true. you know? Yeah. And I'm just sort of telling some of the things that are going on in my life. And obviously, they'll ask questions and what made you decide that. And it really opens up more doors of opportunity in many cases, even if it's hostile. It's wherever the Lord points or whoever's in your sphere, whoever's around you. You just look and you just go. And, and you knock on the and, door. And you knock on the door. Yeah. And you take the risk. And what's the worst that could, that could happen at the end of the day? And over time, I've learned too, KJ, that, uh, that even hostile responses mm-hmm. can oftentimes be open doors. Like I, I run into somebody, I'll, I'll drop something spiritual, and I, yeah. I hate Christians. And, you know, I, yeah. I, I would, I hate talking about politics and religion, you know, and I go, like, wow. Uh, something has happened to you in your past that made mm-hmm. you really offended about Christians. What was it? 
Mm. Most people are willing to tell their story. Well, yeah. Joe defrauded me of you know two thousand dollars when I was in college, and he called himself a Christian. I've hated Christians ever since. Oh, well, wow. that gives me a lot more information as to why the hostility. Yeah. But if people are hostile, you don't know. But you ask a question. Oh, why are you so hostile? Mm. And and that's an open door. And I find a lot of mm. people that are you know have legitimate reasons why they've been hurt by people that are claimed to be Christians or. Are, are, are really opposed to the gospel, you get down under the, the surface of it, you go, oh, okay, mm. I, I, I get mm. why you're upset. And you have an opportunity from being an adversarial role to coming alongside of them and saying, mm-hmm. man, I bet you want to wring that person's neck, you know, <laughs> because I would have been offended too, you know. Yeah. And uh, so I, I've learned to not even be afraid by, by hostile or negative responses. Sometimes mm. people are willing to, to talk more, but if they really don't want you sharing or whatever, then I just respect their opinions. And so, so okay, it, we're, we're going to stop. <laughs> it's, it's believing in that scripture where he says, well, for where I'm, when I'm weak, he's strong. I think Paul prayed for boldness all the time because mm. he wasn't naturally bold either. But he says, Lord Jesus, you know, give me a boldness to wow. speak this hope. And, wow. and God, uh, by grace, really gave him that courage and stuff. So wow. before I talk to people, I always talk to the Lord first and say, Lord, help Greg, you know, to really yeah. <laughs> articulate yeah. clearly and boldly. And, uh, and he always loves answering those kind of prayers. So right. that's, that's a good approach. That's good, man. I'm Bethany, and at Grace Church, we're all about equipping the local church to love Jesus, grow with others, and serve the world around them. Want to go deeper into this topic? We've got a free bundle of resources for you. The free download includes two videos that show what it might look like to apply what you're learning in real conversations, plus a printable PDF workbook for you to study the biblical topic of evangelism further. If you're a church leader, these three tools can help you engage with your congregation on this topic, but you don't need to be on staff at a church to get access to these free resources. It's for anyone. Just click the link in the description, fill out a quick form, and the download will be sent directly to your inbox. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to get instant updates when our next videos are posted, be sure to hit that red subscribe button.